Hi, everybody. There's people out there who want to be scared on Halloween. Well, let's do it. I'll scare the hell out of you here. <laughs> Literally. Let's read this quick Bible tract. And it's not in celebration of Halloween. It's in, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus about Halloween and what it really stands for. Really, the day of October 31st is the day the Reformation began 500 years ago. Christians, that's what we celebrate. We do not celebrate Halloween now that our eyes are opened to the truth. And I pray that this opens others' eyes too. And again, I pray it scares the hell out of you so you never want to go there. This guy isn't going to make it. Ooh, here comes the paramedics. Code blue, code blue. Okay, he's, um, ugh, I guess they're struggling here. I don't get a pulse. There is no pulse, doctor. We're losing him. Get the paddles out. Wham. Well, the paddles didn't work. He's terminated. He's gone. He's gone. It's over. We've lost him. Did you reach his relatives? No, doctor. Okay, let's move. Let's move him into the morgue. The patient was pronounced clinically dead. New stiff, Kathy? Yes, Barney. This place always gives me the creeps, she thinks. Okay, fill out those forms on my desk for me, okay? Okay. Fifteen minutes later, she's scratching on some paper, and the guy wakes up. Yikes. No, no! Eek! He scared the life out of her. Practically. Are you kidding? You say he's alive? Yes, he's terrified. Come listen to him, doctor. He says he went to hell. What? Okay, none down here. It says this story is partially based on a true story. Three men who went to hell. Shown on PM Magazine, Channel 11, Los Angeles, February 24th, 1982. And there's many other stories since then, I'm sure. Okay, back to the story here. Where am I? Where is this place? Thank God I'm back. Gasp. Don't let me die again. Help me. I can't stand it. Everything is all right. Just relax. Obviously, he came back to life. Where can I get a preacher? The guy who died is yelling for one. He's scared to death. Jan, I saw a preacher in room 210 about 10 minutes ago. He's in there, preacher. Something scared the hell out of him. Hmm, thank you. He keeps yelling. He doesn't want to go back down there. It's weird. Spooky. I'm amazed. You want to get saved? God has spared you. Do you realize how fortunate you are to get back? When you're really dead, it's for keeps. There's no second chance. Want to talk about it? I know if I die again, I'll go back down there. It was horrible. Preacher, I've got to get saved. I saw hell. Man, I saw it. Gasp. I don't want to ever see it again. It was dark down there. I was in some kind of room. I couldn't believe it. All around me were these ugly, hideous, smelly things in all kinds of shapes laughing at me, hurting me. They were like some kind of demons. It was so awful. Then all at once, they opened a big door. Gasp, gasp, gasp. He's gasping, you guys. This is not funny. And what I saw really scared me, preacher. It was terrible. Beyond the door was an ocean, an ocean of fire, flames everywhere, and I heard screams. I was in a panic. I was terrified. Revelations 20, verses 10, 14 through 15, and 21, uh, Revelation 21, verse 8. This is written in, in that part of uh, the book of Revelation. Oh my God, I'm so afraid of going back there. That's what hell is like, isn't it, preacher? Hmm. The Bible describes it as a lake of fire burning with brimstone, brimstone Revelation 19.20. Jesus said in Matthew 8, 12, It's a place of outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is a place for all those who die in their sins. 
The Bible says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they shall have no rest day or night. Revelation 14, 11. God help me, I believe it. The Bible is true. Preacher, why aren't they warning the people about the church in the churches about hell? Most preachers don't believe in hell. Those who do, many sidestep it so they won't offend their congregations. That's monstrous. They should be warning them day and night. I know. Jesus spoke more about hell than anyone. He knew about it. He ought to. He created it for the devil and his angels. Satan is trying to take as many into hell with him as he can. He got kids into punk rock believing that hell will be a party time. But they'll never see their friends. Only darkness and everlasting punishment. Some are so anxious to get there they're committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Heaven is shut to the fearful and unbelieving and abominable to murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, which is drug users and witches, and idolaters, and all liars. That's written in Revelation 21, verse 8. Including the homosexuals, thieves, drunkards, extortioners, and fornicators. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3, 23. Preacher, are you saying the whole world is on its way to hell? That's it. But God must have made a way for us to get to heaven, didn't he? He did. But there is only one way, according to the Bible. You can't make it by good works, or by the seven sacraments, or by being a good old boy. Satan wants everyone to think God weighs your good deeds against your bad. But that's a lie. Satan says there are many roads to heaven. There is only one way. Ephesians uh, 2 verses 8 and 9 and Titus 3 verse 5 speak of this up here. You can't get there by works. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No church, saints, Buddha, Mary, Confucius, Allah, no religion can save you from going to the lake of fire. Only, only Jesus can. John 14, 6 will tell you that. The gospel means good news. You don't have to go to hell. The Bible says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's from Isaiah 1, verse 18. In his love... God prepared a way to wash away your sins so you could get to he into heaven. And it was a terrible price. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission from sins. That's Hebrews 9, verse 22. Jesus Christ, God in human form, paid the price for your sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish in the lake of fire, but have everlasting life in heaven. John 3.16 He died, shed his precious blood to wash away your sins. He was buried, rose from the dead, and went back to heaven. That was his first mission to this planet earth. The Bible says he's coming again. That's God's love gift to keep you from going back to hell. Do you want it? The greatest thing I've ever heard. Yes, I want it. I'd be insane to reject it. Thank God you've shown me what to do. And so they prayed. The man who died clinically went to hell and came back, believed on Jesus as his Lord. His life was changed with joy and much relief. Now I'm saved. My name is in the book of life. And by God's grace, I am going to heaven. And down here it says, um, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's Revelation 20, verse 15.